The crypto industry in general is experiencing incredible growth as the price of Bitcoin and the crypto markets have been expanding. Our first guest is witnessing that growth firsthand as the head of a publicly listed crypto broker and trading platform. If you bought Voyager stock one year ago today, it was worth about 14 cents. Today, it is worth about $20. Joining us now is Voyager co-founder and CEO Steve Ehrlich. Welcome, Steve. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, so Voyager is experiencing a significant surge in growth. A lot of brokers are having difficulty meeting that huge demand. In fact, at Coindesk, we're getting a lot of messages from Voyager users saying they can't withdraw funds. You, um, you can imagine how frustrating that can be. Do you know why this is happening? Oh, uh, look, I think, you know, every one of us in this industry is seeing expansive growth, especially us. We've seen just a tremendous amount of growth that we've put out there. Uh, in our publicly stated numbers in the end of March, we haven't seen that stop at all in April. And look, we're very, very careful about the withdrawals because of our own, you know, old banking system, how deposits come in and cash deposits. And look, I think the number one, you know, thing that we work on to make sure every customer and, and company assets are safe for safety and security of all those assets. So if it takes us a little longer to get withdrawals out, it's because we're doing more and more IP checks and making sure the people on the wallets it's going to are accurate, are right, and abiding by AML KYC rules. So we have to know who those wallets are. We want to make sure they're going to the right people uh, and making sure customer funds are safe. Yeah, I'm just getting a tweet right now from someone saying, I have a simple ETH transaction that's been pending for about two weeks. Uh, I also saw that uh, you sent a message to Voyagers, people on your platform, updating them on deposits sent to your payments processor on April 9th, hoping they would clear by April 19th. That's a long time to wait. Why, why is it so challenging? Well, look, again, I think there is a... Uh, it was written recently uh, by somewhere else about a lot of the fraud that goes on, you know, with PPP loans and money coming in and all these accounts being set up by some of these micro banks that are there. So we're making sure that customer funds are safe. That's the number one thing. So every account is different. Whatever tweet you're reading, you know, you never know what the specifics are behind it until you actually see. Maybe that person sent us money and the, and the deposit failed and he hasn't yet paid for that crypto. We don't know until we have to dig in and manually look at all these things and use more technology to make sure everything is appropriate and we're not looking at someone trying to scam because we see a lot of that on Twitter too. There's a lot of scams on Twitter. What's really interesting about this situation is that we're in a moment where everybody's always talking about the risks of crypto, but you've actually warned about the risks of banks and of dealing with banks and, 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 and of banks' ability to evaluate risk. And, and you sort of sent an unusual email to your customers kind of warning of some of these risks. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you see the, the risks that the fiat system and banks play in this, in this uh, economy? Yeah, it's old and archaic, right? I mean, the way the ACH system is set up is old. Uh, there's long processing times. Uh, you know, it takes days for it to clear through that system necessarily. Uh, and then all the micro banks that really aren't banks that sit on top of, a, of the real banking infrastructure, except accounts with less than what I would say uh, great KYC. Uh, and so we're, we've got to vet through all that to make sure. So yeah, the old system isn't great, which is why we exist in crypto today. And there'll be speed bumps along the way as we convert from the old banking system to the new system, which is crypto. Uh, and look, again, I, you know, I always say this, and, and I'm going to continue to say it, is safety and security of customer assets is the number one priority for Voyager. And if it takes you know, a week or two extra, you know, that's a small, limited number of people that have those delays because we're making sure everybody's assets are safe. Steve, speaking of speed bumps, uh, Voyager also has several outages over the past year. Um, how are, are you investing in any upgrades? Are, are you growing out your uh, the, the back end, if you will, uh, to to keep that at a minimum? Yeah, look, I think uh, January twenty eighth, we went down. Uh, we got, uh, as I like to explain it, we were doing a hundred new accounts a minute, which was unheard of uh, in the industry. Everyone and I've been in the capital markets and online brokerage industry now for twenty two years. Uh, it was unheard of. So it was trying to put a thousand pounds of sausage through a, a, a one pound casing. Uh, we, we said right then and there that we were going to expand our team, expand our staff. We raised $150 million. We've gone from 25 employees to 100 employees, and that's mainly in service and in technology. And we said it was going to take us at least 120 days to continue to expand 
so we can you know keep that massive growth we have we have well over millions of users on the platform now so we've seen this growth we're keeping up with it we're adding more people we're adding more technology uh it's kind of growing pain a little bit of growing pains but we're getting there and we're spending a lot of time and money on it as we see still massive growth in the month of april speaking of so growth speaking of you oh Go ahead, Lawrence. Uh, yeah, you, you, you bought a French company, LGO, um, in, in, to get into the European markets, to get some of their, their approvals and their, their licensing uh, this past year. Um, how is Europe uh, for, for your business in general? Uh, what percent now of your transactions and, and of your revenue comes from Europe? Yeah, it's zero percent right now because we bought LGO in December. We're working with the AMF, uh, which is the French regulators. We do have a PSAN license, which allows us to bring crypto into the European market. But we're working with them on making sure all the KYC, all the AML procedures we have, are better than satisfactory for them. And so we expect to be there, you know, sometime the latter part of 2020, uh, 21. And we, we have a huge wait list of people in Europe that want to use our platform. So we'll get there by the end of the year. We just want to make sure back to safety, security, abiding by the rules that are in place, because there's different rules in France and Europe than there are in the U.S., different coins you can offer. We want to make sure we abide by all that. You mentioned growth. Uh, you recently announced a partnership with Lottery.com. Just wanted to get your comments on adding partnerships. So how was that developing on that front? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the what we're expanding into because we have this huge infrastructure now of millions of users is uh, the payment side of the world, where Lottery is going to use our payment rails to allow people to use crypto, Bitcoin, USDC, and, you know, other cryptos uh, to participate in lotteries, participate in other games that they have. This is our first foray into that as we're building out the entire payment payment rails for that, and we have a lot more lined up behind that. Uh, we're excited about that part of the business, but uh, Lottery.com was the first one that approached us about it. And so we said it's a really good opportunity for us to get into that business. So just to zoom out for a moment, you know, there's a lot of criticism that there's just this market is really, really frothy. And when we sort of look at the individual businesses like yours or, or a business like Coinbase, a lot of the growth is tied to just how crazy this market is right now. I mean, are you concerned at all about what happens if the market cools? Like, can you can you continue this kind of growth uh, if, the, if for some reason the market crashes? Yeah, that's really interesting. We see our best days uh, like Saturday night when Bitcoin dropped, give or take 20%. Uh, we have Bitcoin believers. Uh, we have crypto believers. The market dropped 20% was our best day. You know, we had more deposits coming in on the platform. Again, back to the archaic banking system. Money came in Saturday night. Well, we couldn't get that money. So the company actually goes out on behalf of the customers uh, and buys that crypto while we're waiting for that cash to now clear the archaic banking system. But when we see these dips, we see a decrease. We see more money come in because uh, our, our customers are believers in the long term. And we all know that in making change, change doesn't happen overnight. It takes years. And what happens through years of change is volatility. So we know there's going to be more volatility. Volatility is great for our business because any broker wants volatility. That means someone's buying and someone's selling based upon that. We see more buyers on dips. So, But we just know this is going to be years of volatility as we get to changing the system. You brought up the uh, uh, make or die with the mortgages on all these, we're changing the financial system and that's going to take years to happen and lots of volatility. All right, Steve, thanks for joining us this morning and great to see that growth. Oh, thank you very much for having me.